Welcome back everyone. Hi, if you're new, I'm Tori and today I'm going to share with you all the books I plan to read in the month of April. It has been a very long time since I have filmed a traditional, you know, TBR video for this channel. I'm a mood reader. I just tend to go with the flow every single month and so I did start to phase out the TBR videos on my channel. They're not coming back. Don't get excited. This month in particular, there is just so much going on. There are two readathons that I am participating in. The first is Tome Topple, which I'm a co-host for, and then the other is the Tor.comathon, which was created by Bethany from Beautifully bookish Bethany. So in addition to those two readathons, I have current reads that I'm making my way through this month. I have arcs that I have received in the last couple of weeks or so. I feel like this month could benefit from a little bit of a reading structure. That is what this video is. I have about nine-ish or ten books to share with you. Um, so let's get into it. So first we can start with my current reads and then just in general what I plan to you know make my way through in April after my current reads and then we'll get into the books that I plan to pick up for tour.comathon and tome topple so first I'm currently reading pump six and other stories by Paolo Bacci Galupi I have been on this for a while so I feel like this month it's just time to finally close this out this is a short story collection so you know I tend to just make my way slowly through short story collections and you know read a story here and there every time when I get a chance but this one is one that has just been sitting on my nightstand for a long time so I do want to prioritize this and finally get it off my currently reading list but I picked this up because I'm a fan of the anthology series on Netflix it's called Love Death and Robots this last season that aired it's so good by the way if you don't watch that show it's so good there was an episode in it called Pop Squad and it's so good it's one of my favorite episodes of the entire anthology and at the end of that episode I saw that it was adapted from the short story Pop Squad by Paolo Bacigalupi. So I did pick up this collection specifically because of that story. When I got the book, I saw that the story is actually near the end of the collection. So I do like to read the stories in order um, in the collection. So I am gonna get to that story eventually. But so far I have been enjoying this. I'm not unfamiliar with Paolo Bacigalupi's work. A few years ago, I did pick up The Wind Up Girl by him. And I didn't get far in that at the time, but far enough in it to know that, you know, this is not for me at this moment. I'm just not in the right headspace to to read this book but it is a book that I recognized at the time that I did want to come back to something that I would really enjoy so I am going to go back one day and pick up the wind up girl and I have found by reading through this um, short story collection that I do actually enjoy Paolo Bacci Galupi's writing it is very detailed he describes everything he will let you know everything on the streets like what the sky is doing it's just it's a lot so his writing is very in detail very intense but I feel like with a short story collection like pump six it's more digestible than something like the wind up girl so eventually I'll make my way back to the wind up girl but until then I'm just gonna finished making my way through this and it's been good. And next I am currently reading The Kaiju Preservation Society by John Scalzi. This is Scalzi's latest release. This just came out not too long ago and I'm almost done with this. I am on page 178 and I think it's only 258 pages yeah 258 pages in, in this so I'm almost done. Overall this has been fine. It's entertaining nowhere near like the best thing that I've read so far in 2022. This takes place during the COVID-19 pandemic and at the start of the pandemic our main character Jamie is laid off from her job. The company that she worked for was pretty similar to something like Uber Eats or Grubhub but she was on the corporate side but when she's laid off she becomes a driver so she's delivering food to everybody in the city during the height of the lockdown but one of the people that she delivers to turns out to be an old acquaintance and he works for the Kaiju Preservation Society which is this organization that takes care of these like massive monster like creatures and so he pulls Jamie into this work of taking care of these large monsters but everything is happening on an alternate version of earth so that's really what has been happening in this book so far Jamie has gotten a lot of training um, at KPS and just being in the field with these monsters but kind of the bigger picture of the story is that these monsters they can actually be a threat to our world especially if it gets out or if everything is exposed so I have been enjoying this again not loving it not disliking it it's just it's fine it's it's for the moment and then the last current read that I have is Morning Star by Pierce Brown which is book three in the original Red Rising trilogy now that I'm reading this and almost 100 pages in I don't think it's too early anymore to say that the Red Rising trilogy is one of my favorites I have been so obsessed with this series ever since I finished Golden Sun last year and I just feel like I have nowhere to like direct that energy. This series is so good. It is so good. This is like the perfect story of 
revenge and action and politics and warfare and just all these space battles it is so good and just the writing in each book just gets better and better and better but at the same time Darl he just has never forgotten where he comes from he always keeps that in the back of his mind while doing all this plotting and planning I love this series if you have not read this trilogy stop waiting like stop putting it off I need you to go read this trilogy the betrayal that takes place throughout this series is is just amazing. I'm definitely going to be finishing this before I get into the tomes that I'm going to be reading for Tome Topple and then also the novellas for the Tor.com readathon. But this is just, I have just seriously enjoyed every single moment that I've spent with Red Rising and these characters. So now let's get into the other books that I plan to read for the month outside of the two readathons. So first I have The Book of Coley by M.R. Carey. This will be my first book by M.R. Carey since I read The Girl with All the Gifts a couple of years ago. You guys know I am obsessed with The Girl with All the Gifts. I love that book so much so I'm just excited to get back into M.R. Carey's writing and experience a new story from him. In this we're following this boy Coley who lives in this closed off village and outside of the village he's been told that there are a lot of dangers outside the wall but he's never been out there before. So the village is called Myth and Rude and Coley has lived in this village and he's always believed that the first rule of survival is that you don't venture too far beyond the walls. He's wrong so I don't know where this is gonna go but I'm just excited to dive in and this has been on my shelf for a while. The next book I'm gonna be reading this month is The Blood Childs by Annie Davenport. This was an arc I received from Harper Voyager so a big thank you to them for this. I believe this is out pretty soon. I will put the release date on the screen. This is, yeah, I think the release date for this is quickly approaching. So I do want to get into this and get up my thoughts for you guys. But this is a debut a science fiction um, book. This is the first in a duology. So in this, we're following this young woman who lives in this really racist and misogynistic society. And after the death of her grandfather, she decides to participate in these blood trials to basically get revenge for her grandfather and really get to the bottom of who ordered his death. So this sounds amazing. This sounds like it's just going to be a really action-packed debut novel that kind of mixes some science and technology and fantasy elements into the book. I just cannot wait to see where this story goes. Okay so now let's get into some of the novellas that I'm going to be picking up for the Tor.comathon. So the first book I have on my reading list for this month from Tor is January 15th by Rachel Swirsky. This was kindly sent to me as an arc so I definitely want to read this um, soon and what better time than the tour.com a -thon? so so this is a sci-fi novella it also sounds a little bit dystopian which is cool but it takes place in a world where every january 15th all americans receive what's called a universal basic income payment and it sounds like we're just following a group of different characters on january 15th and how they are using this money what they could do with the money so it does sound like a rotating cast of characters and just kind of like a slice of life sort of story in this dystopian uh, world. And then next I have The Black God's Drums by none other than P.J. Lee Clark. I am a massive, massive P.J. Lee Clark fan. This will be my, I think, fifth work by him that I'm picking up and I just, I can't wait to get into it. So this is actually a standalone story. A lot of his work uh, take place in the Jin universe that he has. So in this we're following a teenager named Creeper and she is just trying to get by on the streets of New Orleans and she secures the passage on this airship because of this secret that she's been holding on to about this Haitian scientist and this weapon, this tool that he has that's called the Black God's Drums. So that's all I know about that but it is PJ Lee Clark so I know it's going to be great so I just I can't wait to finally get this off the TBR as well. And then finally for the tomes, I did a whole video <laughs> trying to choose my TBR for Tome Topple and I came out with The Dragon Republic by R.F. Kuang which is book two in the Poppy War trilogy. I still can't believe I have not finished the Poppy War trilogy yet. I mentioned that in the Tome Topple video but when I look back on it I do realize what happened because I picked this up at the end of 2020 and I put it down because I started reading Jade City and Jade City at that time just commanded all of my attention. I was just so invested in that story and the Dragon Republic just unfortunately did not stand a chance that month so I did end up putting it down at the end of 2020 and just have not picked it back up again. I'm not even going to try to pick up from where I left off. I'm just going to start the entire book over again for Tom Topple and go into it with fresh 2022 eyes. So that's the plan for Tom Topple for book one. If you guys don't already know my thoughts on The Poppy War, I love that book. It is one of my favorite fantasy books. It was one of the best books I read that year and I, ow, I just cannot wait to continue on with this um, trilogy. I do highly recommend book one. It is just it's dark. It's so dark and brutal and I just love the fact that R.F. Kuang didn't shy away from that in the first book. It starts off with 
Corinne in this school setting and just how she really clawed her way up the ranks to even get into the school in the first place and then Ren's entire class at this military school graduates into this war that's been brewing and from there the reader is right there with Ren during all of these really brutal moments and it was just it's such an amazing book so I highly highly recommend The Poppy War and I'm expecting nothing but great things from The Dragon Republic. And then finally the last book that I have here is Empire of the Vampire by Jay Kristoff. This is huge. This is like this is massive. This is 718 pages long oh but I feel like this is a book where you just reach a certain point and the story will just really start taking off and I'll just be I'll be hooked for some reason I just get I get the feeling already that I'm really gonna love this this sounds like a story within a story our main character Gabriel he is half man half monster I'm assuming the monster portion is vampire so he's half human half vampire and at the beginning of the book it sounds like he is uh imprisoned and he starts telling his story from you know basically how how we got into this position so it sounds good it sounds like we're gonna be switching between different timelines potentially with him telling his story so i just i can't wait to get into this i'm actually really really looking forward to it more to come on that i mentioned in my tome topple announcement video that i am going to be vlogging this these two so definitely expect vlogs to come for I think I'm gonna read you know what I think I'm gonna read Empire of the Vampire first expect I don't know why I just switched hands <laughs> expect vlogs to be coming for both of them Empire of the Vampire will be first and then the Dragon Republic will be second so it is definitely a busy reading month one that needs some structure to it so that is exactly what's gonna happen um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video let me know down in the comments what books you're going to be picking up in April if you are going to be participating in any of the readathons that are happening this month. And I will see you guys in the next video. Take care.